Welcome back to the building of this power supply. I have put all the components in place as you can see and if you plan on doing this yourself and like to buy the kit there's a link down below to the manufacturer who's selling this and there's also an instruction manual how you put it together and as they say in the manual be careful check all your components if you need use a multimeter to check for resistors diodes everything make sure you put everything in the right place and the right direction especially your diodes and capacitors so you don't fry up something when you're going to power it up and the two things that are not in the kit is the heat sink and the transformer which is going to feed in later and you need that I did a sh short short test run of this and the transformer gets a bit hot so I've salvaged this one for the another stuff here's the rest of it I just cut it down a nut and screw for the, for the transistor and some zip ties to secure it and um, just to make sure so I don't overheat it and talking about the heatsink remember that on a lot of these components one of the lead legs or leads or legs on the transistor is connected to the heatsink so you have connection in between this means you do not want this heatsink to touch anything else components or other heatsink if you're going to use the fan this is the 24 volt vo sub power voltage regulator for the fan if you put a heatsink here it's not touch each other but got it short socket out and you're going to burn something and also as a small security thing i put a zip tie around the legs here so the heatsink can't touch and short out the transistor because this transistor is doing all the hard work if you short it out you're going to get full voltage on the output and most certainly burn something you're building so that's that and i found a small knob now we're going to connect the transformer put down a, and check the zero voltage and I'll put down a small load and see how it works i have connected the transformer with 24 volt in here it's an old transformer so it gives it out a bit too high voltage it's somewhere around, where around 28 volts but i'm going to switch it out for later and my multimeter is set to dc voltage going to check the output and we're going to power it up nothing strange happens more we have 18 volts out so number one turn down the voltage knob to zero that's to the left that's the right pentasiometer all the way down and we should get zero volt out but we get something like 6.2 millivolts we take the 100 k potentiometer and let's see if we can get it down to zero nice and slowly and we don't need to drop the screwdriver these are sometimes so small to get the screwdrivers right let's see uh, one millivolt and oh I went too far you can get negative voltage out of this so check so you don't overshoot and have the probes, probes in the right order negative close to you positive is the far away and we have zero voltage so that's for searing out it and we can check we can get it from zero all the way up to 31.4 volts and eh, that's not too bad so they're going to disconnect and I get to some load connected to check out how the I have connected two 150 ohms resistors to the output in parallel that means I have a 75 ohm load on the output just to check if it works and I connected a small voltage display to it's easier to read and now I have turned the current limitation all the way to the left and the power voltage knob all the way to the left so I'm going to power it up and see what happens no smoke good and just to check I try to put this in a way that everybody can see if I turn up a voltage a red LED for the 
current limitations goes on straight away. That's good. So down with the voltage and turn up the current limitation. We're going to check that it works. I'm going to try to run it at 200 milliamps to start with and we have 75 ohms here. So 15 volts over 75 ohms give us 200 milliamps. So we're going to turn up the voltage and see if there's the display waking up. Slowly get it up to 15 volts. Uh, yeah, 15.3. I'm not that picky. And now I'm going to turn down the current limitation potentiometer until the current limitation kicks in. And the red LED turns on and the voltage is going to drop. It turns on and the voltage goes down. It works. Turn it up again. Check it. Good. So my plan is now to let it run for like 10-15 minutes and uh, just check how warm components get and that's everything working. So I'm going to get my little heat camera and get back to you. I left this uh, power supply running for something like 10-15 minutes and nothing strange has happened. The voltage is still 15.3 volts, uh, volts so nice and stable and I have Go and got my FLIR heat camera and we're gonna see the thing that gets the hottest is of course my little load which have hit something like 100, 120 degrees in some parts and I don't care about that. Uh, the transistor, the big one, is a nice 60 degrees, a bit too hot maybe for my taste but I will not run it which much load all the time and the other components like a hot are one big resistor down here, which is most places are bleeding out energy, that's no problem. There's another resistor down in the corner here that gets quite hot too. I think the reason that one is getting hot is close to 70 degrees now is that my transformer is feeding out too high voltage, so it's just burning off energy. And I must say, it's working quite nice, this. I'm gonna turn off that. It's been working for a while now and um, so far so good. I'm now planning to do some modification of this one because I have some small ideas I want to try. So I'm gonna end here. If you plan to build this it's like somewhere around 10 euros or something like that and it's a small power supply but you need a transformer and you need a heatsink to get it to work. So good luck!